welcome to this series of lectures on air conditioning design the objective of the lecture today is to introduce you to the use of friction charts often used in the duct design so the expected outcome from this lecture is that you would be as a students understand the use of the friction chart what exactly is the friction chart and you would learn a trick of using this friction chart for the duct design i would also touch upon what exactly i mean by the term duct design so what is duct design you look at this beautiful photo here you see some ducts the ducts insulated ducts of slightly different cross section areas these are the circular ducts then there are some smaller ducts also seen here there are some bands so all this kind of ducting including the distribution system of the condition here you'll find in many places especially if there is no false ceiling if there is a false ceiling unfortunately you cannot see this very easily right so what duct design would mean is that you need to know what should be the diameter of this duct to be used or if it is a rectangular duct or a square duct then you need to know its equivalent diameter then you need to select a suitable fan because if i want to allow this air to move through this duct at a particular velocity a particular flow rate then i need to choose a appropriate capacity fan for that so that also includes is included in the duct design if you are doing a excellent duct design your air conditioning system would be an ideal air conditioning system because it would give you the maximum comfort so this is a very important part of your air conditioning design the duct design uh what exactly you do during the duct design what are the steps in the duct design uh when you go, if you want to design the ducts then you first thing you need to do is that you need to contact the architect ask for the building plan and that building plan would give you the location of the spaces you need to condition that would help you locate the air handling unit ahu and then once your air handling unit is known where you are placing that then you can easily estimate what is the length of the duct from the air handling unit up to the space to be conditioned that is the supply duct and similarly what is the length of the duct from that space to be cooled or the room to be cooled up to the air handling unit that is called as a return duct so the length of the duct would be known for the building plan that is very obvious uh, the other thing important thing is how much quantity of air needs to be supplied for achieving the air condition for achieving the inside design conditions so that supply conditions uh, we calculate during the load calculation so we had explained during the load calculations in the videos uh, that after the load calculations the output is one is the we know what is the apparatus dew point of the coil if you are talking about cooling and dehumidification and other is you know what is the flow rate how much should be the velocity of the air to be supplied that is generally that is generally i'm saying they are fixed from the noise concentrations because in some other video i will explain that what are the values to be taken uh, once you know all these things then we can estimate once you know the length of the duct uh you can make a fairly good estimate about the frictional losses and dynamic losses okay so one of the losses uh, frictional losses how to estimate it uh that can be done using the friction chart and that is the topic of the lecture how to use the friction chart okay uh once you get the frictional loss and dynamic loss you can estimate what is the fan total power ftp and hence you can select the fan so these are the important as a steps of the duct design uh, outcome is of the duct design is generally we we find what is the diameter or the equivalent diameter of the duct okay once now you know what is duct design so what is a friction chart friction chart is similar to the other charts which you are been using in your uh, thermal engineering courses for example you are using molier chart or you are using a psychrometric chart okay all this graphical representations okay of the properties would help you uh, it it becomes very handy for the practicing engineers so friction charts are used 
okay, by the practicing engineers to determine the duct sizes. One, determine the duct sizes and the frictional pressure drop and the frictional pressure drop. It could also be used for indirectly determining the dynamic pressure drop. Okay. And what are these charts? Okay. I am not going to explain you how these charts are plotted. Okay. They are plotted by using some expressions of fluid mechanics. And in some other video, I might be able to explain you uh, the fluid mechanics, the principles of fluid mechanics behind the uh, friction chart. Okay. But in today's lecture, uh, we have a very limited objective to explain you the use of friction chart to show you how the friction chart looks okay, and how to use it. Uh, the friction chart which I am going to show is valid only for uh, the air which is at a certain temperature at 20 degrees centigrade and at a certain pressure. That means at a certain specific volume. Okay, uh, It is valid only for the ducts which are clean and they are made up of a material galvanized iron. What to do when they are of a different material or what, what if the temperature is different, the pressure is different or that appropriate corrections are suggested okay so that is not a great deal right so how it looks a friction chart well, i've shown one friction chart on this uh, desk as you see uh, this is a friction chart uh, on one axis uh, uh, there's a friction loss or friction rate it is expressed in uh, the unit of pressure per unit length of the duct so uh, unit of pressure is pascals uh, per meter or it could be uh, you, you might express it in the terms of head also the mm of water column like this right uh, but it is always per unit length of the duct per unit length of the duct so one of the axis it could either be the x-axis sometimes you'll find that this friction rate that is pascals per minute is plotted on the x-axis okay so now in this chart which is in front of you you are having friction rate on the y-axis similarly the other parameter on the other axis is the uh, flow rate, air flow rate, uh, in this chart which is shown to you, which is which I got it from Ashley, it is in liters per second. You might also express it in meter cube per second or like this. Okay, so one leg is the quantity flow rate, and other leg is the friction rate. Uh, the other two parameters which are there on the friction chart are the diameter. You look at this. Where is the diameter? Can you see the diameter? So this is the, this is the diameter. Okay. This is the diameter and opposite to it okay uh, is the velocity so velocity in si unit is in meter per second diameter uh, often is expressed in mm okay so that you have four parameters now on the friction chart in, if you know any two of the parameters if you know for example generally we know the flow rate and velocity and other two parameters are found out or sometimes you know the flow rate and friction loss and other two parameters are found out Okay, so suppose you know the flow rate and velocity. How do you get the friction loss and diameter? This I am showing in some other chart. Okay, so this chart I just uh, I rotated it. Uh, I kept this flow rate on the y-axis and the friction loss on the x-axis now. So now I've taken an example to he uh, help you understand how to use the friction chart. So suppose I know these two parameters. Okay, for example, I know that the velocity is uh, closer to seven meter per second. Okay, it is between six, let us say it is 6.8 meter per second, okay, 6.8 meter per second. So I have plotted that velocity, it is between six and seven at 6.8. And I know, I know the, so this could be velocity on any line. This line is uh, 6.8 meter per second. And that line will intersect, let us say, with the flow rate, which is known uh, beforehand, it is 0.2 meter per second. So this two would intersect and we'll, I'll get a point here. So this point now helps me calculate the other two parameters. So in my case now, the other two parameters are what? In my case, the other two parameters, one is the friction loss per unit length, that is 2.5 pascals per minute, and the other is the duct diameter. So this is the duct diameter in my case. So I get the duct diameter 0.2 meter, so I can choose the duct of a diameter 0.2 of galvanized ion, Right, and that would encounter a friction loss of 2.5 pascals for every meter length of the duct. So this is an important information for the duct design calculations. Okay, so this becomes very handy. Now, what if what if 
uh, the duct is not circular because this is valid for the circular ducts only. So if it is a rectangular duct, then we need to use the concept of equivalent diameter. Equivalent diameter means what? Equivalent diameter means the diameter which would give you the same flow rate and same friction rate as that of the circular duct. So this is important. A diameter giving you the same flow rate and the same friction rate is the equivalent diameter for the rectangular duct. So how do you calculate that? So once I get, for example, uh, suppose suppose uh, these two parameters, uh, let us forget about this. For example, uh, let us say the friction drop is 2.5 Pascals okay, per meter. Uh, it's given that the friction drop is, I, or I want to design the duct uh, by keeping the friction drop as 2.5 Pascals per meter. And I want to maintain, let us say the flow rate as 0.2 meter cube per second. And I, I, I'm, I'm supposed to use a rectangular duct. So from this, from this two data that I want to maintain a friction rate of 2.5 Pascals per meter and a flow rate of 0.2 meter cube per second from and using the chart for the circular duct, I come uh, to a value of 0.2 meter. Now I'm not going to choose a rectangular duct of diameter point of a width 0.2 meter or height 0.2 meter. Then what I need to do is that I simply know that the rectangular diameter is having an equivalent diameter of 0.2. So what I do, so I use the empirical relation. So this is the empirical relation. The equivalent diameter is 1.3 in the bracket A into B raised to 0.625 packet close upon A plus B whole raised to 0.25. Now, uh, and we will just not go into this theory of how this expression has come and all that. Okay, for practicing engineers, this is enough that I need to use this expression. I have obtained the value of the equivalent from the friction chart. And either by knowing A, let us say that is width, or the B, let us say height, I would be in a position to calculate A and B. So if I know the height, if I fix the height, I would get the width. If I fix the width, I would get the height. Or if I fix the ratio of A to B, which is nothing but aspect ratio, it's called as aspect ratio. So width to the height ratio is aspect ratio. So if I am able to fix the width to height ratio also, then also by knowing the equivalent diameter, I got to get the dimensions of the duct. So you see that by using friction chart, I can get both the diameter of the circular duct as well as the width and height of the rectangular duct. Uh, one caveat, one warning has to be uh, given when uh, you are using this chart for the rectangular duct. So if I use this, uh, for the given uh, problem which I was considering, uh, from this I will get a velocity of 6.8. So that 6.8 meter per second is not to be taken as the velocity for the rectangular duct. So what is to be done then? How do I calculate that uh, velocity if the duct is rectangular? In this case, what I need to do is that I need to take the flow rate Q, Q, and I need to divide it by the area of the rectangular duct to arrive at the velocity. So the velocity should, should not be obtained from the frictional chart of the circular duct. Okay. For if the duct is a rectangular, if the duct is rectangular. So you calculate the velocities separately by using the basic expression Q by A if the ducts happen to be rectangular duct. That you need to please know. Uh, the limitations of friction chart, I already touched upon that, that they are available only for the standard material. Uh, if you are using some other material, you need to do certain corrections. The surface finish is different of the material. If it is not very clean, as assumed, you need to do certain corrections. If the temperature is different, other than 20 degrees centigrade, again, those corrections are to be incorporated. So that is not very difficult. You can do those corrections and use the friction chart for the design purposes. So that uh, we come to the end of this uh, short video. Uh, I hope you are confident now to use the friction chart. You know what is a friction chart. If you are asked what is a friction chart or if you are shown a friction chart, you would be in a position to determine certain values from this friction chart. So that was the limited objective of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for listening. Bye.